Good evening. Good to see everyone out tonight. I told Rick the rest of them will be here in the next 10 or 15 minutes. That's, we're used to that. So I, I try not to get too discouraged till 8 o'clock or so. Everybody's here by then. So we appreciate you all coming out tonight. And uh, we're going to just get right in here and get you a songbook. Luke's filling in for Scott tonight. We didn't want to work ever too hard. He's going to sing for us, so we're going to let him uh, off on the song leading tonight, and that way he'll be ready to sing for us. So get your songbook and help Luke as he comes and leads us this. Evening, everybody. Turn your hymnals to 393. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we Jesus will sing and shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway clouds will over spread the sky but when traveling days are over not a shadow not a sigh when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be When we all see Jesus We'll sing and shout the victory Let us then be true and faithful Trusting, serving every day Just one glimpse of Him in glory Will the toils of life repay when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory onward to the prize before us soon his beauty will be Soon the pearly gates will open We shall tread the streets of gold When we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be When we all see Jesus We'll sing and shout the victory When we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout victory well once everybody got here we got a good looking Wednesday night crowd and uh, appreciate y'all being out we have uh I will go ahead and give you what announcements I got now while you're still awake. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sunday we have, uh, what's her name? Yeah, the Yates family. <laughs> Couldn't think of it myself. Yates family will be here Sunday morning to sing for us, so uh, come out for that. Uh, we uh looking for them, looking forward to seeing them and having them here again. Since J.C.'s hands are cold and he's nervous, I'm going to let him wait. I'm going to have Everett come on and start us off singing tonight. All oh, the kids, yeah, well, they, got to, they got to sing. I guess we got an offering, don't we? I forget about the offering sometimes. So. I don't know who it goes to. Is it the missions tonight? It was the youth, seniors, seniors. They get the offering tonight.
Come on up, Everett. Give us a song tonight. Thank, thankful for Everett being here and helping us out tonight with a song. So get right in here and help him. I'm going to try one I know, and then we're going to try one we don't know. <laughs> so maybe. We'll see how it goes. <clears throat> Just a weary pilgrim Plodding through this world of sin Oh, getting ready for that city When the saints go marching in Oh, when the saints go marching in Oh, when the saints go marching in Saints go marching in. My father loved the Savior. Oh, what a soldier he had been. Oh, but his steps will be more steady. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. Oh, when the saints go marching in. And Mother, may God bless her. Oh, I can see her now as then. Oh, with a robe. Go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Up there, I'll see the Savior who redeemed my soul from sin and with extended hands he'll greet me oh when the saints go marching in oh when the saints go marching in oh when the saints go marching in oh lord i want to be in that number oh when the saints go marching in So we're going to try a new one. I don't know if you know it or not. It's He's Coming Soon. Yep, you know it. That's very good. So I've got it marked in F. Yeah. Well, let me testify just a minute. Try to. So it was a crazy day today. Didn't even know if I was going to get here. Tyson had wanted me to come. I said, yeah, I should be able to make it. But it just seemed like breakdowns help, you know, how it goes. And then road closed, supposedly, but it wasn't, so that was good. And so I made it today. So I'm just slowing down just a minute, just on purpose, I guess, is that I felt like a, this was the song for tonight that the Lord wanted me to sing. And nervous, yes, I can sing it, should be able to sing it somewhat. But for whatever the reason, I'll slow it down and let the Lord do his thing right here. If it's just for me, it's just going to be for me so that the, the, so that the devil doesn't run me. Uh, so we're going to try this, and I thought we was going to have a real little crowd, and it might not have mattered quite as much, but <laughs> so, and maybe it'll be okay, but um, I love the Lord, I trust Him, I trust the Lord, He's good, through it all, you know, there's troubles of life, cares of life, you can always find it worse, just look around, you know, and so I'm thankful, I am thankful. Thankful for my family, thankful for health, strength, job, right use of the mind even. Um, thankful for all that stuff. And the Lord has just been good. So you guys pray for me. I'll try this song. I'll start with the chorus. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Well, he's coming soon. There's no doubt. I'm going to leave this world with a shout. And sin will be gone. And things will be right. Keep looking up. He may come tonight. Oh, he's coming soon. Oh, there's no doubt. I'm going to leave this world with a shout and sin will be gone and things will be right keep looking up he may come tonight trumpets will sound and those in the ground who have kept the faith will be heaven bound and we that remain coming soon there's no doubt i'm gonna leave this world with a shout sin will be gone and things will be right keep looking up he may come tonight my heart is overflowing with joy and peace oh now i'll soon be resting at his precious feet it may be in the morning or it may be at noon i don't know when he's coming but i know he's coming soon he's coming soon there's no doubt i'm gonna leave this world with a shout sin will be gone and things will be right keep looking up he may come tonight my heart is overflowing with joy and peace oh now i'll soon be resting at his precious feet it may be in the morning or it may be at noon i don't know when he's coming but i know he's coming soon he's coming soon there's no doubt i'm gonna leave this world with a shout sin will be gone and things will be right keep looking up he may come tonight and that's true tonight could be could be any time we better be ready haven't we i just uh I look for him to come any day. I really do. I don't think this world could stand uh, a lot longer the way it's going right now. I just don't think it's going to last. So we want to be ready. JC, come on. We'll let the pressure off now. You can come sing. <laughs> winding road to the old familiar markers of mercies I have known I know it may sound simple but it's more than a cliche there's no better way to tell you than to say God's been good in my life I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams When I go to sleep each night And though I've had my share of hard times I wouldn't trade them if I could Cause through it all, God's been good. Time replays and I can see that I've cried 
some bitter tears But I felt his arms around me As I faced my greatest fears Well you see I've had more gains and losses And I've known more joy than hurt As his grace rolls down upon me So undeserved Oh God's been good in my life I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams When I go to sleep each night And though I've had my share of hard times I would not trade them if I could Cause through it all God's been good Now God has been my Father My Savior and my friend His love was my beginning And His love will be my end And I could spend forever trying To tell you everything Everything he is But the best way that I can say it Is this Oh God's been good in my life I feel blessed my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night And though I've had my share of hard times I would not trade them if I could Cause through it all My God's been good Leave it all behind, leave it all behind, just leave it all behind. I have what you need, oh, but you keep on searching. I've done all the work, oh, but you keep on working. And when you're running on empty And you can't find a remedy Just come to the well Now you can spend your whole life Chasing what's missing But that empty inside It just ain't gonna listen when nothing can satisfy And the world leaves you high and dry and Just come to the well And all who thirst will thirst no more And all who search will find What their souls long for The world will try So leave it all behind and come to the well So bring me your heart, no matter how broken Just come as you are, when your last prayer is spoken Just rest in my arms a while and you'll feel the change, my child Cause you've come to the well And all who thirst will thirst no more And all who search will find What their souls long for The world will try But it can never fail So leave it all behind to the well, yeah. Oh, leave it all behind. 
The world will try, but it can never fail. So leave it all behind. And now that you're full of love beyond measure, your joy's gonna flow like a stream in the desert. Soon all the world will see the living water that's found in me Cause you've come to the well Yeah And those who thirst will thirst no more And all who search will find what their souls long for The world will try it all behind and come to the well leave it all behind and come to the well I'm glad he's got what we need if we come to the well thank God appreciate this singing tonight now, I, I was watching these boys, my grandson and his buddy Brady there, they stayed up all night last night. 5.30 this morning, they was out playing basketball. They swam in the pool all day, and tonight they're wore out. <laughs> Maybe some of you are too, but let's just try to hang in there. We appreciate Rick coming tonight to preach for us, and you all help him tonight, and I know he'll give you what God has laid on his heart tonight, so come and preach for us, Rick. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Someone else? Young man sang that song said, God's been good. How many can say that tonight? God's been good in my life. Hey, uh, <clears throat> it's good to be here. And Brother Everett said he was nervous. <laughs> I guess it goes to this territory being behind this desk. I'm extremely nervous. I don't even know my own name right now. <laughs> but I, I was thinking today, and uh, my mind went way back to my childhood days. I'll show you how God works. Sister Angie back here, her uh, dad is my one of my oldest and dearest friends. And I thought, how can a young man from, a young boy, I guess, from West Virginia, meet up with a, man, a young boy from... Kentucky, in southern Ohio, and become friends. My wife, Glenda, and, and Angie's mom was pregnant at the same time, and well, I, don't, I forget exactly how old you are, but I know you're right at Tabby's age. <laughs> so, but <laughs> to show you, show you how I'm just, I'm just talking here for a minute, okay? And uh, to show you how things work, and. I know after the, children, the, the girls was born that we kind of separated, not just, just from having to go work. You know, we, we went up north for a while and kind of lost track of Jack and Linda. And, but, you know, here it is now. That's probably been, I'm going to say, 60 years ago. Our grandchildren are best friends. Jevick and Caleb and... I forgot the girl's name. <laughs> what? Adrian and Jessica's good friends. And I thought, you know, how, how, how amazing that is, that the whole thing come around full circle back. And they're working together and, and serving God together and stuff, and, and it's amazing. And Brother Jack, he, he pastors a church over uh, Yankee Hill, and I'm pastoring over Stockdale, and... and, and Sixty years ago, I would have said you're you're plumb out of your head if you ever thought like something like that would happen. But here we are, and uh, but it's good to be here. Uh, how many how many don't know me? Never heard me preach before. Oh, well, we got a few. And, uh, I'm glad glad to be here. My name is as I already said Rick Evans, and got my wife Glenda with me. I'm Tabitha's dad, and uh, it's good to be here. And you pray for me. I'm just trying to get over these nerves a little bit. But ain't got nothing new for you tonight, and, and 
I've been pastoring about 22 years now. I still haven't learned how to preach. But God's using and God's blessing and, and we're still on the way. This evening, if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17. A lot of you will know what the story is before you even turn there. I know you've probably heard this preached about David and Goliath many, many times. But tonight I just got a, three little things that's kind of different. And, and we may get the giant killed and we may not. We may not get that far. It just depends on what God wants and how long God blesses us. As I told somebody earlier, I'm not smart enough to do this on my own. He has to come in. Amen. If you got your Bibles, chapter uh, 17, 1 Samuel. I'm going to read about six or seven verses here and then get right into this thing. It said, Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Socho, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Socho and Azekah in Ephestadim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched in the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and his, he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine, and you servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. Let's pray right here. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time you've given us to be here. We're thankful to be back at Beach Fork again. We pray, Father, you just touch us tonight and help us with the nerves. We ask you, Lord, just to guide us through your word and help us to preach what you'd have us to preach tonight. And Father, help us to not say anything that don't need to be said. And just give the word the way that, it's, that you'd have. Father, when you get done with us, just kick us to the side and get us out of the way. We'll go home and say it's been a good place to be. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. This evening, I want to start on the very first verse that I read to you. And I believe that what's happening here is happening not only, I hope not in this church, but all over churches all over our country. Not only the churches, but all the Christians are falling into this category of what it says in the very first verse. And I read this and it, it just jumped out at me. That's what it says there. It says, look back with me. It said, and the, and, and the army was gathered together at Shocho, with Blonga to Judah. Now, this, this, God brought me to this and showed me this. And I, folks, I don't know about you, but sometimes the way that the Word of God is written, kind of, you have to stop and, and look at it for a little bit. And think about, what, what is God saying? Why did God even put that in there? He could have just said they're, they're gathered together and, and, and they're in a battle, getting ready to go to battle. But he, he put in there, which Blonga to Judah. Now, Timothy, in, in his writing, he said, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now, this was put in there for a reason and for us to look at. What, what is he saying? He's saying that the enemy, if you will have this, is encamped upon the ground, on the land that God has already given to the Israelite people. You know the story how that uh, for 40 years they traveled in the wilderness. They was headed for the promised land. God said, I'm going to take you to a place, <laughs> honey, that flows with milk and honey. I'm going to give it to you. But here we are. I don't know how many years this was after that. I didn't really study that part of it out. But I see that the enemy is encamped or, or invading land that, that God has already blessed them with. In other words, they're getting ready to go back and fight for something that was already theirs. Church, let me tell you something tonight. I believe tonight that there's so many churches in our country today that have backed up on God. 
I believe that the, God has brought them from things and God has delivered them from things, but yet they, they are backing up. They're letting little things come in. And in Solomon, I believe it is, it said that it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. Folks, listen, <laughs> I, I know a lot of people that, you know, that uh, have made mistakes and, and backslidden and, and, and stuff like that. And folks, listen, I don't believe this just happens all at once. I believe that the enemy gets in and I believe the enemy begins to... Uh, tear down and take back little things from our lives and stuff. And, and what are you saying, Brother Rick? I'm saying that there's things that even in our Christian walk that, that God has blessed us with, but yet we seem like we want to back up or we want to let God come into it. Amen? And I know, I know a good friend of mine who pastors a church, and, and 20 years ago you would have never made me believe that he would have stopped Wednesday night service. I would have never believed it. But listen, the enemy comes in and fights, and it hits us in different ways and stuff. What are you saying? Is Wednesday night service important? Yes, it is. Folks, listen, I don't know about you, but Wednesday night's what gets me through the week. Amen? I look forward to coming to church on Wednesday night. I enjoy fellowshipping with my brothers and sisters. I enjoy uh, uh, being in God's service and doing what God would have us to do, whether I, I'm preaching or where I'm going to hear somebody preach or whatever the case is. Folks, I enjoy Wednesday night service. And not only that, and folks, listen, this just didn't happen in an instant. I believe that the little, the little fox has got in and, and made him get his eyes off of God. And, and folks, it's not just him, but it's churches all over our country and stuff. And, and you're hard-pressed today to find a church that has three services a week. It's hard-pressed to find uh, churches that are still serving God like they did 20 or 30 years ago. Brother Freddie can probably contest to that. And, and others in the building tonight... Folks, listen, God's people are letting down the armor, if you will, and not fighting and standing like they once did. And I thought, uh, what are you saying, Brother Rick? But look look what it says. He said it belonged to them, but yet the enemy was there. And I don't know about you, but folks, listen, <laughs> how does that work? How does God, uh, you know, how does God let this happen? Folks, God don't let it happen. God has given you and I <laughs> everything that we need to fight the devil, amen? We've got his word. We've got preachers that preach the word to us. We've got good singers that sing the word to us. And yet, and we got a good prayer life. we got, God teaches us. He said, you know, we need to uh, pray and, and give God praise and thanks for everything. And, and it says, pray without ceasing. Folks, listen, <laughs> how many times, how long has it been since you got down and on your knees and, and called out to God? And you say, Brother Rick, I do it on a daily basis. Folks, listen, that's good. <laughs> Honey, but we read in the scriptures where Daniel, the Bible says, prayed three times a day. <laughs> and the king told him, he said, you're not going to pray no more. But listen, <laughs> I like what it said. It said, Daniel went up to his house <laughs> and he opened up the windows of heaven and prayed toward Jerusalem like he had to. Uh, a four time. Folks, how many of you tonight in your prayer life may be getting just a little weak? Your prayer life may not be, honey, exactly what it used to be. And you say, Brother Rick, is prayer important? Yes, it is. It's very important in our life. And I thought uh, Caleb, he was over to church here a month or so ago and he preached a message and he was talking about uh, getting alone and, and he said he got to the place in his life he just uh, finally just had to get alone and say, Jesus, <laughs> it's just you and me. <laughs> At church, when we can get to that point in our life and we can get down on our knees and Caleb talked about throwing a cell phone out the window <laughs> or hiding it somewhere, or turning it off or doing something, <laughs> honey, just getting away by yourself. The Bible talks about getting in a prayer closet, <laughs> honey, and, and having a place you can get to and go alone with God. <laughs> honey, I believe that a Christian society today is, is far away from that. <laughs> I believe that we just jump up in the morning, Lord, say, Lord, I thank you for the night as we're putting on our britches and our pants, <laughs> headed for the coffee pot. Lord, bless me through this day if you can. <laughs> Honey, I believe that's about the fact of if we get into troubles and trials. <laughs> you know what happens? The first thing we do, we want to jump on the phone and get on the one call. <laughs> Honey, get on the prayer chain, if you will, and say, pray for me. <laughs> Honey, I need prayer. But yet, where was you at on Wednesday night? <laughs> Honey, where was you at on Sunday night? <laughs> Honey, you don't see them in church for a month or two, but they'll be the first ones, <laughs> Honey, to get on that phone and ask for prayer and want to know what's going on in the church or whatever the case is. <laughs> Honey, I believe it's because the little enemy is encamping upon their ground. <laughs> Honey, that once used to be firm. <laughs> Honey, I don't know about you, but I believe that a man or woman, <laughs> Honey, needs to stand upon the God, word of God for 365 days out of the year. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else. I get so sick of it over church <laughs> and I don't know if it happens here, Brother Tom, but listen, <laughs> I could be up preaching and, and, and another thing about the prayer life. <laughs> Honey, people are 
have fallen away from coming short of the reading God's word. And folks, I'll put it just one step closer. Honey, people are getting away from listening to the word of God. You say, Brother Rick, what are you talking about? How many of you in here tonight's already thinking, already got your mind on tomorrow? Honey, what you're gonna do tomorrow when you get go to work or what work to holds for you tomorrow? Honey, I guarantee you there's somebody and I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hand, honey, but I can guarantee you that there's somebody in here right now and they trying to say, well, I wish he'd shut up. I want to go home. I want to see what's happening with the ball game. Well, let me tell you, the Reds won today. That's already over. You don't need to worry about getting home honey, and seeing if the Reds is winning or not. They're 11, 11 straight now. Honey, so get your mind off the Reds and try to get your mind up on the service tonight. Honey, listen, I thought over church there, I saw just a couple weeks ago and I got so aggravated. I wanted to say something, but God wouldn't let me. Honey, I was up preaching and stuff and here this lady was. She was a plan with a baby in front of her. Honey, the lady had the baby held up and she was just making all kind of faces and stuff. And I thought, how sad that is. Folks, listen. And maybe you don't want to hear the word of God tonight. Maybe you don't want to hear the preaching. Honey, but have enough respect for the person sitting beside of you. Honey, that may be going through something. Honey, that may be needing to hear what the preachers are saying. Have enough respect to keep your mouth shut. I'm sorry. Honey, but this is the way I see it. Keep your mouth shut, honey, till you get outside and then play with the babies or whatever the case is. Honey, had a lady Sunday night and it might have been important. I'm not saying it wasn't. Honey, guys just getting ready to preach and she got up and walked outside with her cell phone in her hand. I know she was going outside to talk to somebody. Almost two thirds of the way through the message, she finally come back in. What did she get out of it? Folks, listen. Honey, I believe the word of God, honey, is what gets us through this thing. Honey, the Bible says in the... Uh, if, uh, Psalms, if you will, it says the word it is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You see, we don't have to read the word of God to get the word of God in our lives. Honey, it comes through the good old preaching and stuff. Maybe uh, I'm not the best to bring this to you. I know that. I'm not the smartest. of I tell them over church all the time. Honey, I'm not the smartest, but listen, I got enough sense to know. Honey, when God tells me something to stay away from it, if he puts something, his finger on something in my life, honey, that don't mean just get away from it for a little while, honey, and go back to it. This is what the Philistines was doing. Honey, they was letting the enemy come in. Honey, I don't know about you and what, how you all, I know, I know you all believe, honey, basically the same way I do. You're the old-fashioned way, amen. I still believe in the old time singing, shouting, preaching, running the aisles, walking the seats, whatever the case is. Honey, if God's in it, I'm for it, amen. Honey, but I thought just want you get a couple more things. Let me get away from that right there. Honey, let's go on down if you will just for a few minutes I want to show you something else honey that happened that God showed me honey the Bible says the, the battle went on honey the giant came out they were scared to death and I want you to look on down I forget exactly what verse it is I didn't uh, mark it here but listen I want to show you this right here I believe here at, at Beach Fork Church honey that you got good, uh, godly uh, pastors if you will I believe you got men that will stand for the word of God I know brother Doug brother Tom brother Caleb honey well enough to know that if something comes along they're going to stand and fight for it. Amen? <laughs> Honey, but let's look at what happened here. <laughs> Honey, the Bible says that little David come along. <laughs> Honey, Saul was standing there. He was scared plumb to death. Amen? <laughs> you say, Brother Rick, how do you know that? Well, let's look what happened. <laughs> Honey, the Bible says that the enemy came out, the giant, <laughs> and he told him, he said, send me a man. <laughs> Honey, send somebody out here. You see, the, the devil, <laughs> Honey, he'll not attack this whole church at one time. <laughs> Honey, he won't attack everybody at one time, but you know what he'll do? Honey, he'll call somebody out. He wants to get you one-on-one. -on -one. That's when the devil does his best work. Honey, if he can get you separated from the flock just for a little bit, honey, by staying home on Wednesday night, not reading your Bible like you're supposed to, honey, those little, little foxes will get in, honey, and they'll destroy the vine, and the next thing you know, you'll be uh, uh, just like this was. But listen, honey, the Bible says that they, they stood there, and they, oh, Saul looked at them. Saul was the king at that time. Honey, and Saul looked at this giant and he was afraid to go to him. And you know what the Bible says? Honey, as Saul stood there and said, send me out this man, you know what happened? Honey, the Bible says that they all stood around. All the Israelites, you all this evening, you'd be the Israelites, will you? You're all Israelites. Brother Tom, you're Saul. I'm gonna put you in the spot just for a minute. And I want you to look. The Bible says they was all dismayed and scared, amen? They was frightened plumb to death. Why? Well, I'm gonna tell you why. Honey, it was because their 
leader, <laughs> Saul was scared to fight the giant. Amen. <laughs> Honey, there might be battles facing these, our churches. <laughs> Honey, those that preach the gospel and preach the truth and stuff. <laughs> Honey, the things that's going on in our world today. <laughs> and I'm going to say it. I hope you don't get mad at me, but the homosexuality. <laughs> Honey, it could walk through your back door at any time. <laughs> and I'm glad that I believe that you got the men of God. <laughs> Honey, that will stand and fight and tell them, <laughs> you're not getting in my pulpit. <laughs> Honey, you're welcome to come and sit in my pew. <laughs> Honey, but that's about the stiff of it. You're not getting in my pulpit. You're not getting up here singing. You're not getting up here and carrying on like that. I believe you got men of God, honey, that will do that. But here Saul was. Honey, he was scared plumb to death to fight this giant. How would you all feel, church, you Israelites? Come on. How would you feel if the devil come in and Tom just stood over in the corner somewhere shaking and a trembling? Honey, he didn't want to fight the devil and stuff. Wouldn't you all be dismayed and a little upset with Tom? Yeah. Honey, we all would be. And that's what they said. They said they was dismayed and scared. Why? Honey, because their leader failed them. Honey, the leader was afraid to face that giant. Uh, Brother Doug, you'd face him, wouldn't you? Honey, if somebody come in here and is homosexual and they said, I'm going to preach in your pulpit, Brother Doug, would you let him preach? No, you'd stand against him, wouldn't you? Honey, and little Saul, he was scared to death. He just said, more or less in his own self, he said, I'm not going to fight this man. Uh, David said he would fight him. I'm going to let him do it. Honey, listen, I don't know about you. Honey, I like my brothers and sisters to pray for me. Honey, but when I got a battle going on and it's my battle, I've got to fight that battle by myself. Honey, you can't do it. You can back me up. You can pray for me. Honey, but we've got to fight our own battles. Amen. And we all have them, don't we? If you're a Christian today and the devil hasn't fought you lately, you better check yourselves. Amen. You better find out what's going on in your life. Honey, because I've found out the weaker we get, honey, and the closer to the devil we get, the less he fights us. Amen. Amen. Honey, but when we stand firm to God, honey, listen, the devil was scared to death and he won't bother, he'll bother you more and more. But listen, he said he was scared. And then look what he did to David. Oh, I like this right here. The Bible says he called David over and he said, David, you're going to fight this giant. You need this, this armor. And the Saul began to put his armor on him. Hi, Brother Freddie, let me tell you something. You stood the test out here in this valley. How, old, how many years you've been out here? 91. Honey, what God did for you 90 years ago or 80 years ago, he's still doing for you today, isn't he? <laughs> Honey, that armor that you had back then is still good today, isn't it? <laughs> Honey, you fought many battles in that armor, ain't you? <laughs> Honey, when the devil's been there, <laughs> Honey, you've had on the whole armor of God <laughs> and it stood the Hallelujah. test of time <laughs> and you've been there with it <laughs> and you've fought the devil with it. But listen, <laughs> oh, Saul, here he was. He said, David, <laughs> he said, come over here. <laughs> I got something for you. <laughs> I want to put my armor on you. <laughs> oh, listen to me, brother. I don't know about you. <laughs> But let me tell you something right now. Honey, if you're afraid to fight the devil in your armor, why would I want it? Why would I want what you got if you're afraid to face the devil? Amen. And why would you why would I want what you got? But David said, Listen, I've not tried that thing. He began to shuck it off of him. He said, Get rid of that armor. But let me tell you what my God did. And I thought about the song the little the little granddaughter sing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Honey, David began to tell him, said, Let me tell you what my God did. Did. Honey, you may be afraid to face the devil in your armor, honey, but let me tell you what my God did. He said there was a bear come out and a lion come out, and he said I went after him, and I took him by the throat or however it was, a beard, and I took that little lamb out of his mouth, and he said this uncircumcised Philistine, honey, he's no different, amen? Honey, what the problem is is us. Honey, we get our eyes off of God. Honey, we don't look at what God has done in our life. How many of God has blessed this week? How many in the past year or month or so has God blessed you? How many of you has God, honey, worked a miracle in your life? Honey, and if he done it yesterday, last month or whatever, honey, he'll do it next week. Amen? And the old David said, let me tell you about my God. Let me tell you what Jesus can do. And the Bible says, let me, I'm trying to, I'm going to shut up right here just in a minute. I'm going to get the, the stones in the bag and then I'll probably just go ahead and close her out. But listen, Honey, the Bible says that David shucked that old stuff off. He said, if it's not good enough for you, Saul, honey, it's not good enough for me. Let me tell you something. This word right here, honey, it stood the test of time. Honey, men have tried to change it. Men are changing it. Men are rewriting it. But listen, honey, this 
like old Timothy went there. <laughs> Paul told Timothy, he said, all scripture is given. <laughs> honey, by the word of God. Folks, listen, if it's from God's word, <laughs> honey, we can stand on it. <laughs> oh, listen, it's settled forever. <laughs> oh, Lord, thy word is settled <laughs> in heaven. <laughs> Folks, listen, <laughs> it's not gonna change. <laughs> Man might rewrite it, but listen, <laughs> honey, that don't make it so, amen? <laughs> honey, but listen, look what David did. <laughs> the Bible says that David went down <laughs> uh, to the brook there. <laughs> he took his shepherd's bag <laughs> and he said he began to feel those stones. He went down to the brook, Brother Freddie, and the Bible says, look, look how it wrote again. He said he chose him five smooth stones. He didn't go down there and take a shovel and begin to shovel stuff in his bag. Honey, that's what's wrong with a lot of people today. Honey, getting back to the little vines. You know why? Honey, they've got the wrong thing in their bag. Amen? Honey, I believe little David, the Bible says he went down to that brook and he chose them. I believe he reached down. I believe he rubbed those stones a little bit. I believe there was something that said not that one and I believe David throwed her down I believe he went on a little farther filling those stones and when one felt just right oh listen to me church honey if somebody gets up and tells you something and it don't just feel right honey you need to watch out amen if a preacher begins to preach something to you honey it just don't sound right maybe it just, it just don't feel right in your soul honey you better watch out for him honey but the Bible says David chose those five little stones I believe God directed his hand, honey, to the stones that he wanted him to get. I believe he reached down this stone. Oh, that one feels just right. I'll stick that one in my pocket. Oh, this one here, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah. that's got a little bump on it. I don't need that. The Bible says he got those five stones. Honey, let me ask you this question tonight, church. Honey, what do you got in your bag? Honey, are you just going through this life? Honey, just grab it whatever you can. No matter what you come to, you grab it and put it in your bag. Honey, and go on down the road. You don't pray and ask God about it. Honey, listen, I believe we ought to ask God about everything, amen? Honey, the car we buy, the home we buy, honey, especially you young people over there, your companion that you're with, honey, you need to pray and ask God about it, amen? Make sure you choose the right one, amen? Honey, the Bible says he chose those stones. Honey, and listen, he put them in the script, if you will, and put it in his shepherd's bag, and he went out. Honey, he was ready, wasn't he, Brother Tom? Honey, listen, he was ready to face that giant. Oh, the giant looked at him and said, uh, you come to me with sticks and stones. And David said, listen, I come in the name of the Lord. Honey, he said, you look like a dog to me. But listen, old David didn't really... Or did giant didn't realize, honey, who David was and what David was facing. And listen, I'm gonna tell you right here, right now, right real quick, we're gonna get the giant's head cut off and then we'll go home, amen? And you all can find another ball game or something to watch because the Reds is, all, I've already spoiled that one for you. Honey, the Reds has done one. But let me tell you this right here, we're all winners, amen? Why? Because I read the back of the book. The Bible says that God is uh, gonna wipe away all tears from her eyes. There'll be no more sorrow, no more heartache, no more crying, no more death. Why? Honey, because these former things are passed away. Honey, we're all winners in this thing. Amen? And the Bible says that David stepped out and he looked at that giant and he just took that little sling. He began to wind her up, didn't he? I believe he said one for the uh, Lord, one for God, one for the Father, and one for the Holy Ghost. I believe he let her go. And the Bible says it sunk deep into the, his head and he fell forward and killed not only himself, honey, but he killed his armor bearer. <laughs> Folks, listen, when God kills something in your life, honey, he does it all the way. <laughs> when God saves us, honey, he does it all the way. If we pick something up off the altar and take it back with us, honey, that's not God's fault because <laughs> God killed it when he, when he saved you, amen? <laughs> honey, but the Bible says that uh, David went up <laughs> and got on him and, and took his own sword and slew the giant, took his head off. And folks, listen, he told him that early. He said, I'll feed your head to the fowls of the air. Now this comes from a man that didn't even have a sword in his hand. <laughs> you talk about faith, folks, he had it. I'm gonna leave you with this thought right here. Sometimes God will allow a uh, Goliath to come in your path so that you can find the David within yourself. You think about that. Sometimes the giants will come so that we can find the David within ourselves. This evening, I, I, I'm glad I come this way. <laughs> I'm not nervous anymore. <laughs> I feel like I could go on for another hour or two, but, <laughs> but, but just remember, the little foxes, the little things that we let slip back into our lives, that's what will destroy us. You see this army come out, I believe maybe one at a time, 
I'll share this with you and then I'll show it to him. This, this army come out one at a time, just regular men. Back in my day, I wasn't afraid to stand up against about anybody. But that was back in the day. But listen, this, this giant was something totally different. And that's what happens. The little, little foxes come along. The little foxes will come along and get you weak. And then all of a sudden, the giant pops up. That's why they were scared. It was because of this giant. But church tonight, I would, I would encourage you. I don't know how you want to do the altar call. It no matter uh, to me, but uh, I just would encourage you. Check your life. Maybe God delivered you from something years ago, but it's kind of slipped back on it. You've kind of picked it back up, maybe a habit or something, or maybe you're just not serving God like you once did. You're not on fire for God like you once was. Folks, it's the little things. Don't, don't let the enemy encamp in your territory that God blessed you with, that God delivered you from. Let me put it that way. Don't, don't let him. But tonight, if you're here, I just do like I do at my church. Y'all bow your heads for a minute. Maybe there's somebody here tonight, and I, I believe this message was for tonight. Amen. I, I was supposed to be here about, I think it was six, seven months ago, something like that, and uh, uh, COVID come along, and they canceled church that night. So, you know, the Bible says that everything happens for a purpose. But that wasn't the time and the place for me to be here. Tonight was, because God knew you was going to be here. There may be somebody here tonight. Maybe you kind of backed up on God. Maybe you got your Bible in the corner. Maybe you're not praying like you once did. Maybe your church attendance is not what it once was. Just feel like praying. I want you to slip out and come on. Nobody's looking around. If you have any need at all, no matter what it is, won't you can? Is the enemy encamped in your territory tonight? Brother Rick, I, I'm ashamed to admit it. Don't be ashamed. Because if you don't get it taken care of, he'll overcome you. Won't you slip out and come on? How about it? Somebody need to pray. Come on. Has the enemy slipped back in your life a little bit? Got you discouraged? Got you down? How about it? Won't you slip out and come? My Bible teaches me that we must endure to the end. No place given up. No place to quit. How about it? We tarry just for one more second. Somebody need to pray. Come on. All right. I appreciate you having me. And uh, I've enjoyed being here. And a lot of faces I know or some I don't know. And a lot of faces I miss tonight. People that's gone on home. And I don't know who it was that put the big pitcher of water under the pulpit here, but I notice that's gone. Somebody needs to pick up the banner. <laughs> Somebody needs to get the water pot back up here. <laughs> Amen. Don't let the enemy encamp in your life. Step out. Step up. Because I'm getting kind of dry right now. <laughs> Come on, Brother Tom. I appreciate you having me. I don't want to give the devil back no ground, do you? <laughs> don't give him back nothing. That's it. It's good. I'll tell you what else I like about all that story. Uh, you know, old David, he told him, of course, that he had killed the lion and the bear and all that that he mentioned. But I, I got a feeling he was kind of an ornery boy. You know, when I was a young boy, I'd throw rocks at everything all the time. You know, I thought I was going to be a pitcher or something. I never was. But anyway, I like to throw rocks. I'd say David had spun enough of them around in that thing and let them go that he was probably pretty sharp with it. He'd already prepared 
before he got to the battle. God had already prepared him for what he was going to face. Huh? And I believe that today he'll prepare you for what you got to face. I don't, we don't know what we're going to face in life. And things come along sometimes that we sure didn't see coming, didn't expect. But God will prepare you and have you ready to go through it, whatever it takes. I'm thankful we serve a wonderful God tonight, aren't you? Thank God. Let's stand our feet. <laughs> Come back Sunday morning. I appreciate Rick. Let him know that that was absolutely wonderful message, wasn't it? I enjoyed it. Enjoyed having him tonight. And I wouldn't give a dime for a preacher. This ain't who he is, you know. To just, I, I'm glad he just come and, and is himself, and and uh, that's what I like. And I, I just wouldn't give a dime for somebody that tried to be something they ain't. So appreciate him coming tonight. We love you all. Come back Sunday morning. <laughs>